everyone, I'm Emily, the founder of Asian Wonder Woman Travel Community. I'm also a frequent traveler because my family tends to go between Asia and the US quite often. I'm gonna reveal all of my travel tips for a very long flight because I've been on them before and I know how difficult they can be. I tend to think about the clothes that I'm wearing when I'm going through baggage check, when I'm gonna be on the flight as well as leaving the airport. I personally love to dress very comfortable, very casual things that I can take off and take on because you are going to be in an airplane for a very long time. So if you're wearing very stiff, uncomfortable clothes, you are also gonna be very uncomfortable. So what I usually like to wear is very comfortable pants, things that are very stretchy, very breathable. Usually wear like a shirt as well as like a jacket because it does get cold on the airplane. What I like to do is bring my Uniqlo puffer. It is very compact. You can see it looks like this as such. And what I really like about it is that you can really just smush it down so easily. It's kind of like an umbrella, like you can really just get it to be small and shrink it. In terms of shoes, I wear very comfy shoes where I can just pop on or pop off. Sometimes I'll wear sandals and then bring a pair of socks in my bag as well if my feet get cold. My sister also swears by compression socks when she travels, especially when she was pregnant. She liked wearing them because they would help ease like the discomfort and the swelling in her legs. So I do feel like there's a lot of bloating that happens when I'm on airplanes as well. So um, she's sworn by them. I've never tried it before, but if you have, let me know in the comments below if they've been super helpful. This is also a personal preference, but I tend to stay away from anything that has soda or bubbly in it just because for some reason I get very bloated when I'm up in the air. So I tend to just drink water only. I also drink a lot of water. I don't want to be asking the flight attendant for like 10 cups of water. So I tend to bring my own big water bottle to any airport that I go to. When you go in, it has to be empty, but usually I have water stations where you can fill it up to the brim. And so I usually have one of these with me wherever I go, wherever I travel. So if I need to have a sip of water, I can drink as much water as I want on the plane. That also includes a couple of snacks here and there if I get hungry, just like small crackers or things that are just easy to open and eat. Also, I'm someone who really likes just like thinking and like being reflective and like contemplating things on the flight. There's something about being all the way up in the air, like away from everyone else from civilization in an airplane with all these other people that you don't know. It means a lot of clarity, a lot of time for myself. So I usually like to bring my Kindle along. I like to bring my journal along. I like to bring books just to read everything that I have a lot of catching up to do. I also take that time, meditate to decompress because really when you are disconnected from everyone else on that plane, it's honestly a really great place to think. Okay. Other things, I usually tend to have like a little bag or like a little purse around me that has my most valuables. That includes maybe my keys, my wallet, my passport, as well as any other documentation I might need on hand. And of course, I always have a pen ready. This is because sometimes when you're going to a new country, they want you to fill out a bunch of different forms. So just having everything there in your lap or just near you is a lot easier than getting up and just like picking stuff out from the above just having all of like the necessary information on hand especially like where you're staying too because they will ask like what hotel or like who you're staying with it's just good to have all of that detailed information with you somewhere near you so you have access to it also if you're someone who really likes skincare i would recommend bringing a couple of like lotions hand washes like face washes as well as just anything for your face because it gets really dry when you're up in the air, especially mine. What I will do is bring a bag of travel friendly products with me so that when I am ready to sleep, I can pop off to the bathroom and then just like, you know, apply it on my face and then go to sleep. If you are sensitive to sound, like let's say, you know, baby's crying or someone keeps talking really loudly, I also recommend bringing your headphones or your AirPods, whatever you have that can kind of help cancel out that noise. That's what I normally do. I usually will pop in my AirPods and then I'll play like some lo-fi music while I sleep. And that helps me get into the routine that I need to be in so that I can be fresh and ready when I hop off that plane. And speaking of music too, if you are a big audiophile like I am, you love listening to music and you can't really live without it and you want to be listening to like new songs on the plane, 
make sure you download those songs in advance. I personally have Spotify and I will download songs from Spotify, certain albums that I'll like listen to, whether it's like Taylor Swift, Frank Ocean, I'll have those albums already pre-downloaded so that I can listen to it. If you like watching Netflix, if you like watching certain shows, you can also pre-download those on your phone so that you have access to watching it if whatever's on the airplane screen is like not interesting enough. Additionally, if you are charging your phone a lot or if you need to charge your equipment, I usually always bring a power bank. This battery pack can charge my phone up to four times and it takes all these types of chargers. So having one handy is really good. I also have a rule of thumb where if it is a flight over five hours, I need to have aisle seat. This is a personal preference and maybe we can debate this, but I will always choose an aisle seat when it is more than five hours. I tend to like to stretch my legs. I like to stretch my arms. I like using the restroom with ease. So my personal preference is that I will always have that aisle seat. For context too, I am 5'7". I'm very like tall and lanky and I just don't really feel good like cramped up in a small space. So I definitely like getting up to stretch my legs. If you are someone who is like that, I would highly recommend sitting in the most optimal spot. So usually for international flights, at least for the ones that I'm on, on like Singapore Airlines or for United or Eva, the way that the plane is displayed, because I fly economy, <laughs> it's usually three seats and then four seats and then three seats. I usually choose the seat in the aisle seat in the row of four because that means you only have one other person who will ask, oh, can I use the restroom or can I get to the aisle? If you were seated in the three spot one, you would have two people asking you to come outside. And speaking of spot optimization as well, I tend not to sit close to the bathroom or where the food is being organized. That's because there's a lot of noise, there's a lot of movement, there's a lot of shuffling. You do get the whiffs of the smell from the bathroom from time to time. I would actually sit maybe four to five rows away from the bathroom so that I don't have to deal with that. Also, one of the things that I've done in the past too is if I was still hungry or if I wanted a drink, I would just ask the flight attendant and I would ask really nicely. Usually if you are kind enough, they will be more accommodating. Also, it never hurts to ask. The worst thing that can happen is a no, but usually flight attendants are really good at their craft and they'll try to make you as comfortable as possible. So I also want to say that it's usually when I'm traveling a lot and I don't get enough sleep that that's when I get sick. So before, a flight or during a flight, I usually will have like a packet of like emergency or like vitamins that I'll take just so that my immune system is the strongest it could be. I do that because COVID and also the air in the airplane is circulated. So you don't really know whose germs you're kind of breathing in. So I tend to take those vitamins before and after. And if I really want to be super careful, like someone's coughing near me, I tend to also wear a face mask. This is a little bit uncomfortable, but I don't want to risk getting sick. So there are times where I will just wear a face mask the entire ride unless I need to eat or I need to like brush my teeth or whatever. Um, but I do tend to wear my face mask if I feel like I'm at risk of getting sick. I also have a friend who is a super big germaphobe for good reason to be honest because there's a lot of germs on the airplane but what she does as well is she'll bring like wet wipes and she'll clean the entire seat the handles like she would just clean the entire thing she feels safe being able to fly on that plane and you never know if the equipment was properly cleaned so at least you doing it yourself you'll feel better I also have friends who will bring small packages of medicine. So anything for a pain relieving, for um, an upset stomach, um, anything of those sorts. They have it ready with them in case. I remember my friend and I had the Bali belly, which it was basically like food poisoning after our trip in Bali and it was kind of just like the worst runs you could imagine but he had these like charcoal pills with him the entire time and so we took them during the days leading up to our flight as well as on the flight and it really it just was a lifesaver so just having those kind of things on hand make you feel a lot better and like prepared and equipped because um, both of us probably would have been screwed if we did not take 
that, those charcoal pills. In the case that you chose a very cheap flight, you wanted to save money and you got the middle seat, I would say try not to drink as much liquids so that you're not going out to the aisle seat. Try to make sure that you're standing a lot and stretching a lot before your flight. Try to make sure that you go to the restroom when the person beside you is not sleeping and so that you don't wake them up. I personally feel like if you're sitting in the middle, you can have the hand rests. I, I personally feel like the middle seat is probably the most uncomfortable. One of my favorite tips as well is doing a little bit of research of what will happen when you land at that airport in terms of transportation. I've been to some places where it was super overwhelming, where when you land and you walk through, you have taxi drivers kind of yelling at you to take their taxis, or they kind of just follow you everywhere. That was kind of scary. So I really recommend doing the research beforehand so that you have kind of like knowledge and you have the flow of understanding like when you land, like what transportation are you taking, what you should be um, aware of, what scams you should be aware of, and what apps or ride hailing apps you should look into. I feel like that also helps you ease into traveling and entering a new place. It can be pretty scary and daunting, especially if you've never been there before and if you're traveling solo. For those who are afraid of flying and who might have a little bit of fear during liftoff, what I used to do when I was afraid of flying is I would try and control the things I could do, which usually tends to be body movement at that time and also a little bit of meditation. So I would put my hand on my stomach and then I would breathe in and then breathe out. And I would do this maybe like the entire time. This helped me focus on like one thing, like the feeling of my stomach uh, shrinking and then enlarging, my hand on my stomach. Like I had to think a lot and focus on this one thing rather than like, you know, the plane taking off and all these things happening. Another thing that helped me was putting my hands on my, my leg and then going like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Like I would do that and I would do it over and over and over again. That kind of serves as a distraction um, and a way to make you feel a little bit better when you're flying off. It works for me. I don't know if it works for everyone, but I think if you add in a bit of meditation and you add in something to like hone in your energy on, it helps kind of take away that stress and anxiety. But like if I'm seated in a position, I will be sure to stretch in that spot that I am. So I do a lot of like this stretching, like arm stretching, because I'm technically still seated in my seat, or even just like bringing up like my knees like this, bringing my other knee like this, <laughs> and then just doing a lot of like neck stretches, or even like down this way. Trust me, you will feel so much better doing that while you're on a very long haul flight. I hope all of these tips were super helpful for you on your next long haul flight. If you have any other suggestions, please let me know in the comments below or any questions, I'm happy to answer them. And I love talking all things travel, so I'll continue talking more about it and answering your questions in the next videos. Don't forget to subscribe and see you all soon, bye.